so this is a sub rice so rice is uh, one of the most important staple food crop in india not only in india but also in asia so now we'll see what are all the important uh, diseases that occurs in rice so my name is n h shankar reddy and i am doing phd plant pathology in anamal university so these are the list of important diseases actually there are uh, more than 50 uh, i mean in between 50 to 100 diseases are uh, 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 happens in uh, rice but we are listing the only important diseases and we are going to discuss one by one in detail about the uh, listed important diseases so here uh, there are uh, hope you guys will know about uh, uh, you know plants infected by different types of uh, pathogens that is a uh, fungi bacteria and viruses here i am listed that different types of uh, fungal bacteria and viral diseases so now i am telling about the fungal diseases the first one is blast which is caused by pyricularia varize and then second one is brown spot or sesam leaf spot which is caused by bipolaris varize it is also called it is caused by helminthosporium varize previously it is called as helminthosporium varize now it is called with bipolaris varize sheath blight which is caused by rhizoctonia solani whereas sheath rot is caused by seraclodia varize stem rot is caused by sclerotinia sclerotium varize whereas foot rot or buccana disease is caused by fusarium moniliformi false mud is caused by stilago virens and woodbatta is caused by aphilis varize grain discoloration which is a complex disease complex disease in the sense so which is caused by different types of fungal disease are more than one type of fungal disease if it is caused by more than one type of fungal disease so it is it is a complex disease so grain discoloration which is a complex disease so these are the list of important fungal diseases so now we will see the important bacterial diseases so coming to bacterial diseases bacterial leaf blight that is blb so which is caused by xanthomonas varize pathovar varize the second one is bacterial leaf streak which is caused by xanthomonas varize pathovar varize cola now we are seeing about viral diseases first one is tungro rice tungro which is caused by rice tungro virus grain stunt which is caused by rice grass stunt virus dwarf which is caused by rice dwarf virus yellow dwarf which is a phytoplasmal disease or a phytoplasma like organism and the last one which is not a viral disease but it is caused by abiotic uh, factor that is a nutritional deficiency uh, so rice chyra is a very important disease rice chyra which is caused by zinc deficiency so now we will see Uh, one by one in detail so each and every disease now we are going to see in detail about so the first one is rice blast which is a very very important disease in rice which is caused by pyricularia varize previously it is called as pyricularia varize now it is called as magnaporthi gracia magnaporthi gracia which is a teleomorphic stage or sexual stage or meiotic stage so now it is uh, familiar with magnoporte gracie previously called as pyricularia varize magnoporte gracie is a teleomorphic stage which is a very important uh, disease in rice so here we are going to discuss uh, important symptoms here the important symptoms are spindle to diagonal spindle to diagonal in the sense here this is the spindle to diagonal both ends are pointed we see here both ends are pointed the symptoms are very sharp or both ends are pointed and we can also see red spots or margins on the central grayish white uh, this uh, this type of symptoms can also be seen in rice blast here the pathogen can produce again this rice blast these are the general symptoms so far we have seen the general symptoms so now we are uh, now we are seeing three different types of uh, blast symptoms that is occurs in uh, you know the first one is the leaf blast the second one is the nodal blast the third one is the neck blast the name itself indicates so if the symptoms can be seen in leaf blast is a leaf bl- i mean uh, in in a leaf area that is a leaf blast if the symptoms can be there in nodal blast it is a nodal area this is a nodal blast if the symptoms can be seen in the neck area this is a neck blast so now we will see in detail about one by one the first one is leaf blast so the leaf blast on the right side diagrammatic representation has been given for each and every uh, disease so that the uh, students will be uh, easily can understand so here this leaf blast is susceptible at seedling stage tillering stage and panicle initiation so these three stages are the most susceptible stages for leaf blast coming to symptoms as i told you diagonal or you know diamond shaped spots can be seen here on the right side you can see here diamond shaped spots can be seen here spindle shaped spots are diamond shaped spots with gray center we can see here center is gray in color whereas if you see the margins dark brown color margins can be seen here this again i am telling you these are spindle shaped spots with pointed ends and whereas gray is or whitish gray margins or gray center can be seen 
and the margins are dark brown in color simply you can write for in, in exam you simply can write you know a spindle shaped spots with uh, uh, you know brown color margins or grayish dark brown color margins can be seen in a leaf blast so later in later stages what will happen these spots will coalesce coalesce means they come in together or they can all uh, uh, combine it together and cause quick death of leaves all the, initially they start with small small spots and they can start to coalesce and they can uh, you no know, in the, in, the, in, the, in the severe stages the leaf will die this is a leaf blast. Now coming to nodal blast or culm blast sorry the spelling mistake it's a blast only so nodal blast or culm blast so here on the the symptoms can be seen on node regions only we can see black or blackish brown lesions can be seen especially on the node regions this is where you know uh, you know uh, this is the where uh, you can take the stem this is the node where uh, uh, two uh, areas can be adjoined here this is the node so blackish or brown lesions uh, uh, can be seen in a uh, you know, node regions so later what will happen this will spread to uh, this will spread to upper regions and as well as the lower regions due to that what will happen the node will become so weak and it can't able to stand it by its own or the panicles can't able to bear on the upper surface because where uh, the roots can absorb all the nutrients so it have to transport it to the you know on upper upper leaf area so if the node is very weak it can't able to bear it can't able to stand and you know it can't able to transport the nutrients from root region to shoot regions uh, due to this what will happen in the severe cases 100% of the uh, yield loss will happen because the, if the panicle can't able to bear you know uh, 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 sorry if the node can't able to bear the panicles or it can't able to have energy or uh, strength to bear the panicle it can't able to produce any yield because the panicle is the most important part in uh, uh, rice you know so this is about nodal blast so coming to neck blast or the panicle blast so here on the right side we can see the infected neck sorry infected neck region or the upper panicle region dark brown color spots as well as the black color spots you can little brown as well as black color spots can be seen here so on the panicle region dark brown to black color spots can be observed if you see the grains in the panicle partial grain filling or sometimes there is no grains will happens inside the this ch panicles or chaffy grains or you know uh, the grains it contains or doesn't contains any grains partially filled grains or chaffy grains or uh, you know light weighted grains can be developed so due to that what will happen there you know it's a complete loss because if the panicle if the panicle is completely filled with the rice grain it is a economic pot where uh, uh, where it can generate income to the farmer if it is a partially filled or chaffy grains in the sense it contains no grains inside that particular uh, the panicle area so this fungus grains also infected uh, uh, they infected the grain regions and later that the grains will also slowly turns to uh, uh, you know uh, uh, turns to black or dark brown in color so this is about neck blast this is sometimes it can also leads to 100% disease losses if the uh, panicle is complete or not filled with uh, you know uh, uh, this uh, grains coming to the mode of spread so the second spread is mainly through airborne conidia second spread is through airborne conidia where it produce uh, because it's a ascomycota pathogen produce conidia so here the conidia can spread through airborne air through air so you can see here whatever the what, you know you can see the spore which is produced by magnopotha it is a two septations three celled each and every spore contains two septations and three celled conidia is produced by rice blast pathogen it is also one of the important feature so it contains two septations and three celled the type of conidia is pyriform conidia you can see this is a pyriform conidia so coming to the survival so in the, the pathogen can survive in dormant mycelium and the conidia infected uh, also survive in raw uh, straw and as well as seeds here the collateral host is panicum repens lercia hexandra echinocola crasgali which harbors the pathogen these are the weed species which act as a collateral host to the pathogen it's also one of the important questions uh, uh, that we can see in different types of exams so they will ask like this and uh, what is the collateral host of rice blast pathogen panicum repens lercia hexandra echinocola crasgali these are all the uh, different types of weed species that can harbor the uh, rice blast pathogen coming to the epidemiology epidemiology in the sense environmental factors what are the favorable environmental factors that is required for the growth and germination of uh, rice blast pathogen if you take intermittent drizzles like you know light uh, not heavy or not uh, uh, less rains light drizzles 
cloudy weather with a uh, with a minimum of relative humidity and average of 90 to 92 percent or sometimes it may require 95 percent but 90 percent is more than enough for their growth and low temperatures are required maybe 12 to 15 or less than 18 degrees centigrade will be most favorable for the uh, growth and germination of a rice blast pathogen so coming to the management aspects here uh, uh, i included uh, uh, some of the important management practices as well as uh, some advanced research what happens in uh, uh, rice blast uh, uh, at present at the end we can see the rice blast culture this is the rice blast culture uh, uh, that can uh, cultivated in you know cultured in a laboratory so coming to the rice blast this can be managed by you know uh, uh, resistant varieties so there are plenty of resistant varieties are available for uh, rice blast so here the susceptible varieties are uh, Mansuli and Jumli. So these are the some of the uh, susceptible varieties. Now I think most of the uh, varieties uh, uh, that are released in uh, regarding uh, rice are resistant to rice blast. But still it is infected by rice blast pathogen because of uh, uh, resistant each and every year due to selection pressure. The pathogen will develop resistant and it can overcome the resistant and uh, again we need to develop a new resistant variety. It happens all the time uh, for every four to five years, especially if you take uh, a wheat stem rust and rice blast pathogen, they can, uh, these pathogens will overcome the resistant very fast because of selection pressure. So every three to four years, uh, you know, uh, we need a resistant, I mean, uh, again, uh, we have to go for a, a new resistant variety. Anyway, so avoid cultivation of susceptible varieties that is uh, uh, Mansuli and Jumli and uh, seed treatment before transplanting or uh, before you know uh, 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 before transplanting or uh, uh, it's better to treat with uh, capton tiram or carbon disease at the rate of two gram per kilogram of seeds and some biocontrol agents like pseudomonas fluorescens at the rate of 10 gram per kilogram of seeds can be also be uh, recommended so seedling root dipping so before transplanting it's better to seedlings are root dipped with uh, pseudomonas fluorescens it is a bacterial biocontrol agent it's better to uh, transplant uh, uh, sorry it's better to uh, uh, dip the transplanting seedlings before transplanting then avoid closer spacing so uh, it's better to avoid the very close spacing of uh, uh, rice and uh, uh, don't uh, uh, you know uh, don't uh, broadcast the excess amount or excess doses of nitrogenous fertilizers because it improves cool weather because of you know a uh, lot lots and lots of uh, uh, water gets evaporated due to the cool nature where it can uh, also harbors the pathogen because of this cool nature so better to avoid uh, uh, heavy doses of nitrogenous fertilizers and then better to go with uh, some resistant variety with uh, cr 1009 these are some old resistant varieties now you know uh, you guys will know about each and every year the new resistant varieties will come all the time so co-43 co-44 8036 40 these are some of the resistant varieties for rice blast and you can also spray with pseudomonas fluorescence at the rate of 2% or iprobinophos. These are the fungicide at the rate of 500 ml per hectare or tricyclozole. Very, 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 very important. It's one of the uh, selective fungicides that are best recommended fungicide for uh, a rice blast. We can recommend as tricyclozole at the rate of 400 gram per hectare can be allowed. So the trade name of tricyclozole is Beam. So it is uh, in outside selling with the trade name of Beam. Some of the other fungicides also recommended like you know, San or you know, uh, you know, uh, some of the other fungicides are also recommended, but the most selective fungicide or most recommended fungicide is tricyclazole. So some of the important fact, uh, important uh, points that I would like to mention here that the fungi produce here the pyricular in our pyricular virus or magnoporta grace, the fungi produce two types of the uh, toxins that is uh, alpha piconilinic acid and pyricularin these are the important toxins which is produced by the uh, rice blast pathogen here the fungi produce pyriform conid as i told you earlier to produce pyriform conid this is the pyriform conidia which is important uh, uh, type of conidia which has a uh, two septations and three cells as i told you if it is a pyriform conidia one septation two septations these are the two septations two if it contains two septations how many cells will be there three cells one cell second cell here three cell so it is a one of the important feature so the uh, pyricular pathogen will produce pyriform conidia with the two septations and three celled so the second important disease is brown leaf spot or sesam leaf spot which is caused by elementosporium varese or bipolaris varese now it's uh, called with uh, now it is uh, uh, the new name is uh, bipolaris varese better to you men you guys can mention the new name that is bipolaris what is it? So coming to the symptoms on the right side, we can see numerous brown to uh, round oval shaped spots, small uh, brown to round oval shaped spots can be observed on leaf and as well as the leaf sheath areas. 
so if you see the leaf and leaf sheath area small round brown color spots can be seen here small round brown color sesame space uh, uh, shaped spots can be seen here so these spots are resembles or look like to sesame i hope you guys will know gingelly or sesame so these spots are resembles like sesame hence it is called as sesame leaf spot so here the sesame uh, spots can also be observed on uh, you know uh, grains also and along with the uh, dark brown spots can be observed on grains also and uh, it and, and uh, the this small sesame paper spots can occurs in leaf as well as grain areas also sometimes you can also see on uh, glooms so hope uh, uh, this is the one of the important historical important disease that can happens in uh, india as a great bengal famine which is responsible uh, uh you know the the disease which is responsible for great bengal famine which is caused by elementosporium varese or bipolaris varese in 1942 and 43 in the year of 1942 and before our independence in i mean uh, close to our independence in bengal provision or some of the parts now nowadays the some of the parts are now in bangladesh so in bengal area it's a devastating epidemic so millions more than 3 to 4 million people are died because of food starvation so this devastating disease will leads to uh, most of the crop losses so that the people can't able to get their foods or need their uh, uh, energy requirement so the most of the people are died are I mean, um, no, uh, young children are died because of malnutrition or uh, insufficient amount of foods. So this is one of the important uh, epidemics in the history of uh, plant pathology. So, coming to uh, mode of spread, the primary spread is mainly through infected seeds. Primary spread is mainly through infected seeds, whereas the secondary spread is mainly through airborne conidia. This is also uh, we can see here airborne conidia. Uh, this is a uh, conidia it's not like uh, rice blast pathogen where it contains many septations so we can see here many type of septations and many cells will be here so coming to the epidemiological factor 28 to 30 degrees and whereas the 90 to 90 92 percent of related humidity will be most favorable for rice uh, 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 brown leaf spot this is our sesame leaf spot this is this is the culture that can be cultivated in our laboratory we can see little uh, brown uh, not brown uh, sometimes a little black not we can't say completely black is we can uh, uh, little white and the central region not white or little you know uh, uh, not dark white is a little white or uh, uh, slowly if it extends uh, slowly black color uh, vari uh, variations or variations can be seen in a uh, uh, brown leaf spot pathogen so coming to the management aspects uh, better to go with uh, disease free seeds so disease free seeds is uh, one of the uh, management practice coming to uh, next one seed treatment with uh, other chemicals like capton theram carbendazim these are the seed treatment chemicals Uh, normally recommended 2 g per kg of uh, seeds and uh, can also recommend by control agents so pseudomonas fluorescens at the rate of 10 g per kg of seeds and some of the resistant varieties are available for uh, against this pathogen that is co44 and bavani these are the resistant varieties are available and we can also spray carbendazim at the rate of 250 g per kg of oh, sorry per hectare and as well as a uh, manco gip per uh, 1 kg per hectare can be recommended uh, uh, for managing a uh, brown leaf spot third disease is rice sheath blight which is caused by the fungus rhizoctonia solani so coming to the symptoms so uh, for each and every symptoms you don't need to uh, memorize each and every symptoms you can see the visual representation of the disease and you can write by your own before that you have to know uh, you know what are all the general symptoms what are all the colors are you know what are all the uh, general types of uh, symptoms that is produced we have to know first of all then we can discriminate or we can uh, decide ourselves and we can write by our own so here uh, on the for the sheath blight we can see mostly the sheath blight can affects the crop from tillering to heading stage these are the most susceptible stage why it is called a sheath blight the disease can occur in the sheath regions or you know uh, sheath regions are the most uh, uh, favorable uh, uh, area for this disease that's so called as sheath blight so tillering and heading stage the most susceptible stage coming to this uh, 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 this disease and leaf sheath if you see the and leaf sheath if it is a stem there is a leaf sheath above the stem yes so on the leaf sheath oval or elliptical spots or this is initially oval spots when it enlarges it can extend so initially oval or elliptical spots can be seen with gray center on the center we can see sorry with uh, uh, gray spots slowly it's initially gray spots can appear later what will happen this gray spots will enlarge initially small spots will appear later the spots will enlarge this enlarged spots will having the grayish white center and the center we can see grayish white center as like of rice blast 
the grayish white center if you see the margins uh, little brown color margins or purple color margins can be seen so white are not completely white or grayish white center with the purple or black uh, with the purple or brown color margins can be seen initially small spots will appear later the spots will enlarge in advanced stages this brown color sclerotia can be formed so it is a resting structure that is produced by the uh, right sheath blade pathogen so in the advanced stages this right sheath blade pathogen or this rhizotomia pathogen will produce sclerotia which is irregular in shape uh, and this uh, sclerotia can be produced on the infected tissues this is about uh, a sheath blade pathogen so small uh, uh, you know gray spots will appear later the spots will enlarge and gray gray white center with brown color margins or brown color endings can be seen in the later stages it will produce sclerotia so coming to the mode of spread the pathogen is mainly spread through irrigation water so if the if the if the plant if the area or if the uh, cultivated area is infected with the rice uh, rhizotonia solani or uh, sheath blood pathogen so if the irrigated water comes from infected area to uninfected area definitely the uninfected area will also get be infected by this rhizotonia solani so the survival coming to the survival the pathogen can survive as sclerotia which is a resting structure so um, in principles itself uh, having a great uh, introduction about the uh, different types of resting structures and uh, sexual and asexual fruiting bodies and the you know uh, uh, hope you guys will know about and you can also see on the channel in uh, uh, principles of plant pathology we had did uh, many videos on regarding this uh, principles and introduction to plant pathology so i explained in detail about this different types of resting structures and the sexual and asexual fruiting bodies and uh, different types of classifications of fungi and you know uh, uh, coming to the classifications and uh, everything that has uh, uh, we already uh, posted in our uh, youtube channel and this is uh, uh, as i told you that uh, black color sclerotia can be produced this is a resting structure that can survive a long period in unfavorable conditions so coming to the management survey aspects avoid flow of irrigation water from uh, you know uh, infected area to healthy fields healthy healthy, healthy fields and the summer plowing will also help to reduce the inoculoma or helps to uh, reduce the soil bound sclerotia if you plow in the summer area the temperature will be very high in summer area so that what will happen the sclerotia which are present beneath the soil under the soil if we plow what will happen the soil which is present in the under side will come to upper side so it exposed to high sun or high temperature area so that the sclerotia can be destroyed and also avoid the doses of avoid excess nitrogenous fertilizers and we can also spray carbon dioxide at the rate of 250 grams per hectare and chlorothalonil which is one of the recommended fungicide for uh, uh, this pathogen and uh, this chlorothalonil 1 kg per hectare and propiganazole at the rate of 0.1% during tillering stage can be recommended propiganazole can be recommended at the rate of tillering stage so this is about uh, rhizotone solani and the fourth one is sheath rod earlier we seen sheath blight whereas this is sheath rod which is caused by saraclodium varese here sheath blight can be seen on the lower stem regions or the sheath regions whereas sheath rot can be seen on the panicle regions here this is the panicle regions so here the disease affected the boot leaf covering panicle whereas sheath blight can be seen on sheath regions or the lower stem regions whereas the sheath rot is can be seen on the upper panicle or boot leaf covering the leaf that is covering the panicle if it is a consider let us consider if it is a if it is a panicle which a, a boot leaf which covers this panicle or covering the panicle in, before the initiation of the grains after the initiation of grains the panicle will uh, uh, get removed so that the after the maturely developed grains will have ability to stand on so before developing the grains there is a boot leaf which covers this grains so here the disease will occur on that particular boot leaf so here the affected areas or the affected boot leaf will shows a grayish brown margins grayish brown lesions oblong lesions can be seen this is a grayish oblong lesions brown brown color grayish lesions which can be seen on uppermost leaf sheath uppermost leaf sheath or boot leaf here in the severe condition white color mycelial growth also can be seen on uh, this panicle and as well as sometimes can also be seen at grains also so here uh, here uh, uh, in the later stages what will happen in, in initial stages the you know uh, uh, grayish brown color lesions can be seen uh, sometimes you know in the severe cases white color mycelial growth can also be seen on uh, uh, upper panicle as well as you know uh, sometimes grains 
so if the, the ink panicle uh, will be infected uh, remains inside so the panicle will be covered inside sometimes what will happen the sheath along this leaf sheath and as well as the grains both can be infected and sometimes a partial grain filling also can be seen so survival and mode of spread the pathogen can be survived in infected seeds so it can be survived in infected seeds and uh, it can also spread through airborne conidia coming to here the infected seeds also can act as a inoculum for the spread of the disease this is about uh, symptoms uh, then these are the spores which is produced by this uh, sheath rod pathogen so coming to the management aspects avoid excess doses of nitrogenous fertilizers as well as uh, you know also better to go with optimum spacing what are all the spacing that is recommended by you know uh, plant uh, you know uh, rice breeders or uh, uh, rice experts so better to go with optimum spacing and then uh, spraying of carbon dioxide at the rate of 250 grams per hectare or mancozib at the rate of 1 kilogram per hectare or uh, chlorothonalin at the rate of 1 kilogram per hectare can be recommended N C N S K in the sense neem seed cake extract or 5% can be recommended for this and then hypomia or prosopis leaf powder extract at booting stage can also control this disease so here uh, application of hypomy and prosophis uh, uh, is a leaf powder is also one of the recommended for uh, controlling of uh, this is sheath rot pathogen so now we are going to see the differences between sheath rot and sheath blight pathogen so the first one is sheath rot as well as sheath blight so sheath rot is caused by seraclodium varese and the perfect stage or teleomorphic stage or sexual stage all are same per perfect stage or teleomorphic stage or sexual stage which means all are same meaning which is a sexual stage the asexual stage is seraclodium varese whereas sexual stage is acrocylindrium varese whereas the sheath blight is caused by rhizoctonia solani and the perfect stage or teleomorphic stage or sexual stage is thanatiphorus cucumeris it is the sexual stage of sheath blight pathogen so as i told you the disease can affect the boot leaf covering stage boot leaf covering stage it can affect by panicles in the upper sheath whereas sheath blight can affect the collar region or down region or you know, stem regions especially on the water surface of regions so the fungi produce conidia which pathogen the sheath blight pathogen produce conidia whereas sheath sorry sheath rot produce conidia whereas sheath blight pathogen will produce slerosia here the fungus spread through airborne conidia the pathogen also can be spread through seed borne in case of in the case of sheath rot in the case of sheath blight pathogen the pathogen is a soil borne pathogen which is a soil borne pathogen and can be spread through irrigation water and the disease is severe during a boot leaf initiation stage during especially in the boot leaf initiation stage the sheath rot is very severe whereas the sheath blight pathogen is very severe during especially tillering stage so here the pathogen can the sheath rot pathogen can survive in the infected plant debris so infected plant debris can be act as a uh, you know or can be uh, the sheath rot pathogen can survive in the infected plant debris whereas sheath blight pathogen can be survived in slerosia in soil so this is a resting structure that can be uh, survived during unfavorable environmental conditions whenever the favorable environmental conditions will occur the pathogen will germinate and can uh, cycle will continue and can cause the disease again and again the next disease is stem rot so which is caused by the stem rot is caused by slerosium varese the slerosium is a, a wide host range pathogen which consists of 500 species as a, a host range it is one of the most important pathogen so the host range is 500 host species it is the widest host range pathogen so the coming to the symptoms of this stem rot disease we can see the symptoms here initially small black irregular spots can be appear small black irregular spots can be appear initially on the outer leaf sheath regions on the outer leaf sheath regions initially small black spots will appear what will happen these spots will coalesce and the these spots will uh, small slowly uh, combine together uh, and it can slowly enlarges to the uh, uh, leaf uh, onto the uh, you know uh, on the upper leaf sheath area and it can uh, enters into the inner leaf sheath it can enters into the and can penetrates into the inner leaf sheath and finally the infected leaf sheaths are the infected leaf sheath area with rods and sclerosia are formed on the host tissues sclerosia are formed on the host tissues initially small black irregular lesions will appear this lesions will enlarge slowly and it can penetrate into the inner leaf sheath area and finally the infected uh, leaf sheath will completely rots and sclerosia can be formed on the host tissues we can see the sclerosia on the host tissue 
Coming to the mode of spread, this sclerotium can be spread through irrigation water because it's a soil borne pathogen, it can spread through irrigation water only. It can't able to spread through air. And coming to the survival of this pathogen, the survival the pathogen is a soil uh, survived in slime borne sclerotia and can also survive in infected stubbles and straws can also act as a surviving uh, structures uh, during unfavorable conditions. So coming to the management aspect, the summer plowing and burning of the stubbles because it can also survive in stubbles and dry areas. So it's better to burn stubbles left inside the fields. So before uh, uh, on the, uh, going for the next cultivation, it's better to go with the uh, uh, better to burn the uh, fields and the summer flowing also one of the recommended uh, practice and balanced fertilizer application or less amount of nitrogenous fertilizer application will also be recommended so avoid flow of irrigation water from infected field to healthy field because i told you uh, it is a soil borne pathogen and it can be spread through uh, irrigation water so better to uh, avoid the flow of irrigation water from infected field to uninfected area so the coming to the next disease which is caused uh, which is uh, food rot or buccane disease so which is caused by Fusarium moniliformi or Zibberilla physicori. Coming to the symptoms on the right side we can see the tillers are very taller than that of normal uh, plants. Coming to the normal plant let us consider if the rice will grow 40, 45 centimeters or something like that or nowadays hybrid plants doesn't grow more than 30 centimeters or 20-25 centimeters. So actually the normal plant coming to the normal uh, if, we, if we compare to the normal plants the food rot or buccane infected plants are taller than that of normal uh, plants. Why uh, the plants are uh, very taller? Because the disease infected plants will produce zibberilla. Zibberilla is a plant growth hormone. Due to the production of zibberillin, due to the production of zibberillin, the plants will produce more amount of tillers as well as the growth of the plants can be increased. That's why I think it's called a foolish disease. It produces huge and huge amount of tillers as well as the growth of plants also very huge. So that what the farmers will think of. So this year we are going to get a good yield. Actually that's not true. If the plants are normally taller than that of uh, normal plants, sorry, if the plants are taller than that of normal uh, uh, plants, it can't produce any grains or partial grain filling or reducing the tillers or the sometimes the leaves may be dried. So it, it looks like to taller than that of normal plants but can't produce any completely filled grains. Partial grain filling and sterile grain, um, I mean sterile uh, empty grains can be seen and uh, sometimes the panicle can't initiate as I told you sometimes you know uh, reduced tillerings also can be reduced. In, the, in the severe cases what will happen 100% of the yield loss will happen because of the you know it can't able to produce any panicles or partial, partial grain filling. What will happen there is no growth or uh, there is no income can be generated. In the seed bed, infected seedlings uh, with the lesions or roots will die. So sometimes in the you know in in in, in the bed region and the bed and during a bed timing, the seedlings with the lesions and the roots will die because of this uh, uh, high gibberella uh, gibberella production. So some uh, some maybe uh, uh, die before transplanting. Even after transplanting, uh, it, it it the growth only can be increased and it can't produce any tillers or uh, any uh, uh, you know viable grains or any economic grains can be produced by this pathogen that is food rot or buccane disease. This is mainly due to the production of high amount of gibberellin. It is a growth hormone. Coming to the management aspects, uh, seed treatment with captain or carbendazim or theorem. These are the seed treatment fungicides can be recommended for uh, at the rate of 2 gram per kilogram of seeds for the managing food rot or zebrella physicori. So seed treatment with the fungicides, uh, uh, theorem, thiophenate methyl or benomyl is also effective uh, uh, before planting. Or benomyl at the rate of 1 to 2 percent of uh, seed weight can also be recommended uh, before transplanting of uh, uh, you know uh, uh, recommended for uh, this disease. So the next important disease is fall smut which is caused by Estilogonida virens. So here uh, this disease is also called as green smut disease. This disease is also called as green smut disease or Lachmi disease. As farmers believe that this Lachmi disease infected fields normally results a bumper harvest and they thought that they will get more and more yields or a bumper harvest uh, if it is getting infected by a false smut. So coming to the symptoms, the symptoms will appear on ears we can see here. Uh, few grains are not all the grains maybe uh, you know uh, if, we, if let us consider if the panicle having 50 to 100 grains only few grains 2 to 3 grains or maybe 4 to 5 grains not more than that very few grains or ears are converted into grains I mean uh, converted into smut balls 
this mud balls are like you know a small sometimes black to brownish in color so the infected ears converted into smud balls infected ears are converted into smud balls as i told you ovaries are transformed into a large valvetic green masses you can see here so the infected ovaries are large valvetic green masses not green uh, i mean uh, sometimes initially it may be look like green some later it turns to black color sometimes brown color a uh, uh, smut balls a uh, smut appearance can be seen in a uh, uh, affected panicle area as i told you usually very very few uh, grains are very few uh, grains are affected in a panicle so this is about false smut false smut and the smut smutting of a grains are panicle uh, you know uh, uh, can be uh, the most diagnostic symptoms of false smut which is caused by slogonoda virus coming to mode of spread so this can be transmitted by uh, you know uh, chlamydospores or airborne spores uh, but do not themselves from the spore balls easily because of the presence of sticking materials it it can stick to that particular plant material chlamydospores are stick to the plant plant material so it can't able to easily blown up by air and it can be transmitted but it can be transmitted through air so but it's as tightly stick into that particular material of the particular uh, uh, you know uh, spore balls so coming to the survival the pathogen can survive as sclerotia uh, which is a resting sore and also chlamydospores in soil and can this pathogen can survive in sclerotia as well as chlamydospores coming to the management practices seed treatment with carbendazim at the rate of 2 g per kg of seeds and spraying copper oxychloride coc copper oxychloride at the rate of 2.5 g per liter of water and propiconazole at the rate of 1 uh, 1 ml per liter of water at boot leaf stage or milky stage will be most useful for preventing this disease and at a tillering stage or pre uh, i mean uh, before flowering or pre flowering stage hexaconazole at the rate of 1 ml per liter of water or chlorothenal at the rate of 2 g per liter of water also can be recommended so the next disease is udbatta disease which is caused by a fungi aphilis varizae so coming to the symptoms on the right side we can see the symptoms mainly it can infect panicle areas it can infect panicle areas so here the leaf sheath or the panicle areas slowly you know uh, dirty gray color powdery masses can be seen and partial grain filling it is one of the most important diagnostic uh, symptom partial grain filling can be seen here it resembles like the infected uh, panicles resembles like udbatta we can see the udbatta i mean for uh, you know for puja and all those things we can use udbattis so it resembles like udbatta hence it is named as udbatta disease and as i told you no grains are formed or partial grain filling or no grains are formed and brown color powdery masses also can be seen and it slowly uh, uh, at distance it look like udbatta that is that's why it is called as udbatta disease which is caused by aphilis varizae coming to mode of spread and survival the pathogen is extremely seed borne and is mainly transmitted through seed uh, i mean seeds and can survived as a infected uh, and survived in the infected seeds so seed material is the more, one of the important structures for their uh, survival so this is the uh, laboratory uh, culture where uh, 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 udbatta disease can be cultured in laboratory this is the culture you can see brown color with uh, uh, white color margins at the end you can see this is the uh, culture and it can also produce spores like you can see small spores S spores also can be seen here with some uh, tail like ends can be seen on the both ends some tail like ends can be seen on both ends uh, some spores having only one end and uh, coming to the epidemiology uh, it requires a soil temperature around 28 degrees centigrade and abundant soil moisture which is the uh, most favorable for this disease so coming to management aspects so uh, use disease free uh, planting materials or disease free seeds for sowing because i told you that uh, Uh, it is mainly transmitted and survived in uh, seeds so it's better to use a disease free seed materials for sowing and we can also recommend the seed treatment with capton and theram so uh, in earlier uh, disease also we have seen capton and theram are the seed treatment fungus that we can recommend and the physical methods that is hot treatment uh, it is one of the important uh, of uh, the disease hot treatment of seeds with 50 to 54 degrees centigrade for 10 minutes so before sowing gives a very effective and great control against this disease and the solar heat treatment of uh, seeds is also effective in killing this pathogen if uh, there is any inoculum or if there is anything will be there in seeds it's better to uh, go with the solar heat treatment or hot water treatment of seeds so here the main, this is mainly transmitted to seeds so uh, these two physical methods are can be recommended for the controlling of this disease coming to next uh, disease the grain discoloration which is a fungal complex disease and where the disease is caused by different types of uh, fungal pathogens different on the locality and the area so coming to the symptoms dark brown to 
a black color spots can be observed on the grains on the grains if you see dark brown to black if let us consider it is a seed of uh, a rice grain dark brown to black spots black spots or dark brown spots can be appeared on the grains so the infection may be external or sometimes it can also can be observed on the internal if you open the seed or if you open the, uh, the seed, i mean rice seed as some seed coat na uh, sorry that uh, covering structure if you open that inside the seed also can be infected by this uh, dark brown color spots or black color spots also can be observed sometimes so here that's why this is called internal and external and red yellow orange pink color uh, discolorations also can be observed sometimes in very rarely on glooms and as well as kernels also as i told you many fungi are involved in the uh, appearance or causing the disease that's why it's called a fungal complex or fungal complex disease and the different uh, de depends on the locality here i'm telling you the different types of fungi which are involved in this uh, uh, grain discoloration or dressulera uh, curvulera curvularia seraclodium and uh, alternaria i think i mean alternaria also fusarium cladosporium epicocum foma nigrospora these are all the different types of fungi which are involved in uh, uh, uh this grain discoloration depends on the area so these are all the different types of fungi involved in this grain discoloration so coming to the management aspects uh, um, spray the crop at boot leaf stage with mancozeb so mancozeb can be recommended at uh, before boot leaf stage at the rate of 1 kg per hectare or we can also recommend captofol it's it's also uh, a fungicide uh, at the rate of 250 g per hectare or carbendazim at the rate of 250 g per hectare can be recommended and here one more thing is very important thing store the grains at the rate of less than 11% moisture is also one of the important factor required to escape this disease so grain discolor if you want to escape it's so better to uh, store the grains below 11% i think uh, for rice 12 to 13 13% uh, of moisture can be ideal for uh, if you want if you want to escape this disease so it's if it says a better to store the grains uh, under 11% moisture on or be, i mean the below 11% moisture conditions will be ideal to escape this disease so now we are going to see about bacterial diseases so far we had seen uh, a uh, fungal diseases now we are going to say bacterial disease the first one is bacterial leaf blight or blb rice blb it is one of the important disease which is caused by xanthomonas or is a pathovar or is it is a bacterium so coming to the symptoms there are three types of uh, uh, symptoms can be observed in uh, bacterial leaf blight the first one is uh, leaf blight phase the second one is crescent phase or wilting phase the third one is yellow leaf phase so in a leaf blight phase a small water soaked lesions on the right side we can see a small water soaked lesions can be observed on the margins on the margins only we can see on the margins small water soaked lesions can be observed in the later stages this will become enlarged and a necrotic pitch will be seen initially small water soaked lesion later a, a necrotic patches will be seen so if you see the inner portion of the disease leaves it, it shows the wavy margins so inner portion of the disease shows wavy margins under humid conditions a, a creamy white color ooze out is a characteristic of this disease ooze out in the sense ooze out is the ideal uh, identification character for the uh, for identification of bacterial disease especially bacterial leaf blight so ooze out is a very a very simple if you if you want to identify whether it is a bacterial disease or not you take out the leaf and dip it in a test tube which consists of uh, sterile water after uh, placing it for one or two minutes what will happen a white color creamy liquid will exudates from the infected area which indicates the presence of bacteria that is a bacterial disease that's they are telling bacterial ooze out if we dip it in a water or the sterilized water that consists in a test tube a thick creamy ooze out can be observed that is the identification of bacterial leaf blight in crescent phase or wilting phase the most destructive phase and very very important and different types of questions can be placed crescent phase can be observed in bacterial leaf blight this is one of the questions that i had seen in many places and in this crescent phase or wilting phase no tillers will occur leaves wilting can be hanged downwards so there is a very most destructive and uh, you know harmful stage or very destructive stage and a wilting yellowing of seedlings is a very uh, commonly we can see the, uh, in we if you, if someone will uh, come uh, if someone will place to uh, write this uh, you know uh, what what will be the ideal characteristic of crescent phase in uh, bacterial leaf blight the most important symptoms are wilting and yellowing of uh, seedlings and no tillers can be uh, produced and later stages leaves uh, uh, can be wilted and hanged downwards and the, the last one is yellow leaf phase 
so in the yellow leaf phase what will happen the infected plant show pale yellow color discoloration and the youngest leaves in hill may turns to yellow or white in color mainly seen on the you know in the margin areas only we can see in the in the straw color or dying or you know a uh, brown color discoloration or completely dying uh, uh, discolorations or margins if the margins are especially dyed or margins are especially uh, started from uh, wilting like symptoms if we see that is a bacterial leaf blight in the leaf blight place in the in the margin in the disease will starts with the margins the margins are near laminar tip region slowly enlarges and become the necrotic patches or dying like symptoms and the second one is crescent phase wilting and yellowing of leaf and this is the important symptoms of bacterial leaf blight and coming to the management practices avoid clipping and tipping of the seedlings at the time of transplanting so during transplanting it's better to avoid the clipping and uh, uh, you know tipping of uh, uh, seedlings during transplanting and use optimal doses of nitrogenous fertilizers and also you can use uh, uh, physical management practice that is hot water treatment of seeds at the rate of 10 minutes at the rate of 50 to 54 degrees centigrade for 10 minutes can be recommended and we can also have some resistant varieties like ir20 ir36 tkm6 are the resistant varieties against this black terrier leaflet pathogen and we can also stress septomycin sulfate for fungi we can use fungicides for bacteria there is no commercial bactericides are available so we can go for antibiotics so spray antibiotic that is streptomycin sulfate along with the tetracycline combination at the rate of 300 grams and also copper fungicide uh, sorry and also copper oxychloride at the rate of 1.25 kilograms per hectare can be also recommended here who's out test as i told you who's out test if we have that infected leaf let us consider if we have test tube this is test tube with the 10 ml of water the in, if the if we dip the infected leaf if we dip the infected leaf after uh, two to three minutes of dipping we can uh, we can see some uh, uh, thick creamy ooze out or liquidy uh, ooze out material that uh, that indicates the identification or presence of the bacterium this is the ooze out test can be recommended for the identification of the bacterium come the next one is a bacterial leaf streak which is caused by the uh, bacterial pathogen xanthomonas varize pathover varize cola uh, the coming to the symptoms the infected leaf shows fine transcalent streaks you can see here transcalent streaks can be seen here and the streaks if it, if it is a leaf if it is a leaf transcalent streaks can be seen on the middle regions transcalent streaks is the most identification uh, 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 diagnostic symptoms of bacterial lesions especially on the vein areas veins uh, vein areas Later, uh, if you see the lengthwise, it will slow. Uh, the, the normal uh, the leaf will also little bit enlarges and uh, enlarging. Uh, I mean, enlarging later slowly turns into brown in color. Here, the bacterial exudates also appears on the lesions at high humidity and uh, you know uh, later dry uh, remains uh, uh, on the lesions will be most favorable for this disease. And the transplant lesions or transplant streaks on the uh, midrib lamina will be the identical ident 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 diagnostic symptoms of the bacterial leaf streak. So coming to the management practices, seed soaking with 0.25% streptocycline, there is an antibiotic and the physical treatment that is hot water treatment at the rate of 52 degrees centigrade for 10 minutes can be recommended for this bacterial leaf streak. And we can also spray agromycin, this is one of the, it is also one of the antibiotic, uh, agromycin at the rate of 100 ppm and our streptocycline at the rate of 100 ppm twice at the rate of 10 degrees and uh, I mean uh, 10 days intervals can be uh, one of the recommended practices for this and this agromycin streptocycline or uh, uh, you know these are all the antibiotics that can especially recommended for the bacterial disease as i told you we don't have any commercial formulation of bacterial cells even though if they there are one or two available so it's a better to go with anti sorry antibiotics for bacterial diseases so so far we had seen uh, fungal and bacterial diseases now we are going to see viral diseases the first one is tungro it is one of the important uh, uh, disease in rice which is caused by rice tungro virus that is rtv rtv in the sense rice tungro virus coming to the symptoms we can see the symptoms the infected plants show yellow color discoloration this is the most diagnostic yellow color discolorations can be seen on leaves uh, and the rusty blotches spreading downwards so on the downwards uh, there is a little bit uh, you know green color can be seen on the upper side if you see the tip area or the laminar area uh, show, uh, yellow color discoloration can be seen and the most important diagnostic and prominent symptom for the identification of rice tungro is the infected plant shows stunted 
the stunting growth of infected plant is the most identified stunted growth with yellow color discoloration of leaves is the identification character of rice to grow so the infected plants produce few uh, few spikelets few spikelets can be produced and panicles also uh, and are small with the discolored grains so even though it produces a few amount of spikelets and panicles the grains are discolored stunted growth with yellow color discoloration is the identification symptom so the, so it is a viral disease uh, i think you guys will know that uh, viral disease can't able to uh, spread through you know soil or irrigation water or uh, you know uh, airborne so it is strictly need a vector for the transmission from one plant to another plant or sometimes uh, you know um, uh, mechanical transmission also can happens but most of the uh, plant viruses can be transmitted through vector so presence of a vector can be required for the transmission of plant viral disease here the disease is spread through green leaf hopper rice to grow virus is transmitted by green leaf hopper that is nephrotetix virus or nephrotetix nigropictus is the most important vector for rice to grow virus they will ask questions like this rice to grow virus is transmitted by green leaf hopper you don't need to mention all the green leaf hopper something like that but leave, go with the leaf hopper that is nephrotetix virus or nephrotetix nigropictus is the uh, vector for uh, uh, green leaf hopper this is a uh, uh, green leaf hopper nephrotetix virus or nephrotetix nigropictus this is a green leaf hopper coming to the management practices summer plowing and burning of the uh, diseased leaves that is roging and field sanitation will be required for the control of rice to grow virus and the control of insect vector so if you want to control insect vectors we need a systemic insecticides like monocrotopus at that point 25 percent and i think uh, monocrotopus was banned in india even though it's banned uh, still uh, it will be available somewhere else hope you know about the indian conditions <laughs> so growing some uh, disease tolerant varieties or uh, this is resistant varieties like co45 and ir50 are the most recommended varieties for uh, uh this uh, rice to grow virus so for the identification of this rice to grow virus iodine test will be recommended for this identification of rice to grow virus so this the iodine solution will consist of it's a very important we can see this type of questions in exam so this type of questions only they will ask so what is the vector for rice to grow virus uh, that is uh, you know green leaf open nephrotetix virus or uh, what is the test used for the identification of rice to grow virus iodine test so here i am going to tell you the composition of iodine solution iodine 2 grams potassium iodide 6 grams and 100 liters of water will be required so this uh, a dilute 10 ml of the commercial tincture iodine solution so 10 ml of solution uh, iodine solution can be required or that was available in medical shops with 150 ml of water so the procedure is 10 cm long leaf tip is cut in at 6 am why they are telling at 6 am if you do at uh, uh, you know uh, middle uh, you know, uh, after uh, uh, high temperature times uh, we may we don't get the desired result that's why you better to go with at morning 6 o'clock or the evening 6 o'clock will be the ideal time for this uh, taking this iodine test so 10 cm leaf tip can be cut into uh, on or before 6 am so it contains little amount of moisture that will be very ideal for this iodine test and this uh, leaf is put into iodine solution for this uh, 30 minutes because we already prepared the solution earlier for this uh, testing so if it tests uh, uh, if it dip into 30 minutes rtv infected leaf shows dark blue streaks if dark blue streaks will appear this is the indication and the presence of rice to grow virus so iodine test will be recommended for the identification of rice to grow virus so coming to the next virus grass stunt which is caused by grass stunt virus so here on the right side we can see stunting of plants can be seen a low color discoloration also can be seen very small plants compared to normal plants stunting so here the coming to the symptoms of infected plants are stunted and produce excess tillers have erect the growth habit so here the stunting and excess production of tillers excess amount of tillers can be seen here and growth also very small i mean stunted growth can be seen with uh, you know uh, uh, yellow color discolorations Uh, leaves are very short narrow and pale pale green to pale yellow color and new numerous rusty brown spots can be seen here stunted growth yellow colors excess amount of tillers the leaves are very short pale green to yellow in color these are the identification symptoms of rice grass stunt virus so here the rice grass stunt virus which is uh, 
transmitted by the vector brown plant hopper brown plant hopper that is nila parvata lugens this is the brown plant hopper nila parvata lugens so this grass stunt virus is transmitted by brown plant hopper nila parvata lugens it is a very very important vectors are very very important we don't know uh, they may ask uh, definitely in uh, different types of exams so better to uh, memorize all the vectors so coming to the management aspects roguing and field sanitation and use of systemic insecticides to control the vectors and of course some resistant varieties are available like ir28 ir29 ir30 32 and 34 are the resistant variety for this uh, uh, virus so coming to rice dwarf so rice dwarf which is caused by rice dwarf virus so uh, this almost this uh, you know uh, symptoms are a little bit stunting can be seen yellow yellowing can be seen this is the most common so infected plant shows marked stunting growth with chlorotic or white specks on the leaves it is also uh, it is one of the uh, you know diagnostic symptoms of the rice dwarf here the infected plants are stunted that will be common and the chlorotic or white specks on the leaves can be seen chlorotic or white specks along with stunted growth is the identification character of a rice dwarf virus and the number of tillers may be reduced with regard to the root growth so number of tillers will be reduced we can see here number of tillers will be reduced as well as uh, you know a uh, root growth also reduce yellowing of uh, disc, uh, yellowing uh, can be seen on uh, leaves uh, with the uh, white specks on the leaves can be seen that is one of the diagnostic uh, character of rice dwarf virus so coming to the vector it is it is transmitted by leaf hopper that is nila parvata nigro sorry nephrotetics nigro sorry uh, leaf hopper which is caused by as uh, transmitted by nephrotetics nigropictus and one of the other vectors also uh, leaf uh, species of leaf hopper also involved that is resilia dorsalis it is of the species of uh, leaf hopper it is also involved in the transmission of this disease the leaf which is transmitted by leaf hopper nephrotetics nigropictus and resilia dorsalis and also a uh, weed species echinocola crascali this is echinocola crascali we grass weed species which are harbors of the pathogen during off seasons or during unfavorable conditions this echinocola crascali is a weed species that can harbor the pathogen and it transmitted by leaf over this is the leaf over uh, nigropic nepotetics and nigropictus and resilient dorsalis this is the species that can transmit it and coming to the uh, management aspects roguing and field sanitation to destroy the weed host and spraying of monocrotopus at the rate of 500 ml now mono if the monocrotopus is not available you can go with the ibuprofenfas or uh, uh, some other uh, systemic insecticides uh, to control the insect vector if the insect vector is controlled automatically disease can be controlled the coming to yellow dwarf virus as i told you it is a pytoplasmal disease and coming to the symptoms uh, the infected plants are stunted we can see the infected plants are stunted infected plants are stunted with have a light uh, no yellowish green or whitish green leaves uh, lightly whitish greens or yellowish uh, green leaves can be seen excess tillers if you see the leaf leaf area is completely restricted a leaf area is reduced L uh, stunted growth yellowish green or whitish green leaves excess tillers can be seen but leaf area is completely reduced so here the affected plants are usually sterile it produces nothing 100% yield loss if it is yellow dwarf virus which is caused by pytoplasma 100% yield loss if the field is completely infected definitely 100% yield loss will happen this is the diagnostic symptom of pytoplasmal disease so it, this uh, this pytoplasmal disease which is transmitted by green leaf hopper that is nephrotetics virus and nephrotetics nigropictus uh, transmit this is this is this is uh, pyto uh, this uh, this is transmitted by uh, leaf of this is green leaf open coming to the management aspects uh, deep plowing in summer and burning the stubbles and growing of resistant variety like ir62 and ir64 and control of insect vector by using a systemic uh, insecticides will be recommended for the control of this disease now we will see some difference between uh, uh, yellow dwarf and tungro disease so here the yellow dwarf disease is caused by pytoplasma whereas tungro is caused by virus so here the symptoms can be seen only in a transplanted transplanted crop this yellow dwarf can be seen only in transplanted crop whereas tungro symptoms can be seen in transplanted crop and nursery also this tungro can be also uh, affects in nursery crops also here in the yellow dwarf virus entire leaf will become yellow entire leaf will become yellow whereas in tungro yellow and orange yellow line alternative green uh, green to dark green lines can be appeared on leaves so if it is yellow dwarf completely the leaf completely turns to yellow color whereas in tungro yellow to orange color streaks or lines can be seen on leaves so here in yellow dwarf 
number of tillers will be increased number of tillers will be increased exactly opposite to rice tungro virus number of tillers will be decreased in tungro virus so leaf becomes soft and droop droops slightly whereas here in tungro leaves stand erect leaves are stand erect like this whereas in uh, lice dwarf they are slightly soft and droop slightly here a severe stunting can be uh, seen in yellow dwarf whereas moderate stunting can be seen uh, for your understanding let me tell you in moderate stunting means let us consider if a original uh, healthy plants having 30 centimeters moderate stunting maybe it can grow 15 centimeters something like that here in severe stunting it can't even grow maybe 5 to centimeters for your understanding i am not i am telling so severe stunting in the sense it completely stunted very small uh, growth can be seen whereas moderate stunting means it will grow but it can allow color discoloration stunting can be seen as uh, compared to normal plant so phytoplasma can be retained by the vector throughout its life so both the phytoplasm in yellow dwarf and tungra is transmitted by vectors so here the phytoplasma retains by vector throughout its life whereas tungro can't uh, tungro virus the vector can be retained within two days after molting so within two days after molting the vector can be uh, uh, the vector can lost the ability of transmitting the tungro disease so in tungro disease the vector can last within the two days after molting after the generations will passes after molting two days it will lost the infectivity whereas the phytoplasma can retain the vector uh, infectivity throughout the life so here the vector transmit phytoplasma only 25 to 30 days after feeding so the vector transmit phytoplasmal disease only 20 to 25 days after transplanting whereas in tungro virus the vector transmit the virus immediately after feeding it be, it become viriliferous and can capable to transmit the uh, uh, tungro virus whereas uh, in the case of phytoplasma it will take 20, 20 to 35 days after feeding so coming to chira disease which is a nutritional deficiency disorder which is caused by zinc deficiency so coming to uh, rice chira which is a zinc deficiency it is mainly due to zinc deficiency coming to the symptoms uh, initially older or interminal chlorosis uh, yellowing or you know whitish yellowing specks are present mostly observed on the seedling stages so this uh, rice chira can be mostly observed on seedling stages especially two to three weeks after transplanting this uh, uh, nutritional disorder can be seen so coming to management aspects so, so application of zinc sulfate at the rate of 20 to 25 kilogram per hectare before transplanting so application of zinc sulfate before transplanting that is 20 to 25 kilograms per hectare can be recommended along with the root dipping along uh, at the rate of 2% ZNO for 1 to 2 minutes can also be recommended uh, to escape from uh, you know zinc deficiency or disorders if the soil pH is 8 to 9 there is no effect on the application of zinc sulfate make sure your soil pH is below uh, 8 or below 7 uh, that will be better or more effective uh, if we apply zinc sulfate if the soil pH is go, gone beyond 8 to 9 or if the soil pH is between 8 to 9 even though we applied zinc sulfate the zinc chira disease cannot be controlled so make sure that the soil will be having a, a, a ordinary pH or the pH below 8 so this is the uh, management practices for rice chira disease so coming to questions related to ARS or uh, net now we will see one by one uh, starts from uh, rice blast so regarding rice blast they can ask you know uh, uh, what is the causal organism of rice blast that is a pyricularia varisa or magnoporte agresia so uh, they can place uh, uh, questions like this and uh, what is the specific fungicide recommended for controlling of rice blast so as i already told you that it's a tricyclazole it's a very very important uh, fungicide for recommended for uh, uh, rice blast the trade name of tricyclazole is beam uh, sometimes uh, they can also ask like this and coming to the brown leaf spot, historical importance of brown leaf spot is mainly due to Helminthosporium varizae or Bipolaris varizae. What is the year of Bengal famine? Uh, Bengal famine is mainly due to Helminthosporium varizae or uh, uh, Bipolaris varizae. So, happens in the year of 1942 to 43, especially in the Bengal provision. So, now some parts are now in Bangladesh. So, and they can also why it is called as Sasem leaf spot because Sasem vapor spots are can be seen in uh, leaves and as well as sometimes we can see in. Uh, uh, you know uh, the glooms that's why it's called as a sem leaf spot and uh, um, historical importance then uh, uh, coming to sheath rot and uh, sheath blight they can ask castle organism sheath rot is caused by and sheath blight is caused by receptor so sheath rot is called by seraclodium varizae like this they can may ask questions and coming to the bacana disease they can ask uh, castle organism as well as uh, 
and uh, why the uh, you know uh, why the uh, bacana disease infected seedlings are uh, which grows uh, more taller than that of normal uh, seedlings the main reason is due to the production of zebrilin so they can ask also like this and uh, what is the uh, growth hormone responsible in uh, excess tillering and excess growth of uh, uh rice plants in uh, bacana disease they can ask like this the reason is uh, the main uh, on, on, i mean the reason is uh, uh, due to high production of zebrilin and coming to fall smart and you can they can ask uh, casal organism coming to wood bother and also ask casal organism then coming to the uh, brown uh, sorry uh, bacterial leaf blight it is one of the important diseases in rice and they can ask questions like this bacterial leaf blight enters into the plant pathogen sorry uh, bacterial leaf blight can enters into the plant cells through hydrothoats is one of the important question and bacterial leaf blight can be what is the most de- destructive stage of a bacterial leaf blight crescent stage and what is the test used for the identification of bacterial leaf blight who's out test like this they will ask so coming to casal organism also one of the impo- uh, important uh, questions or uh, one of the important chances of uh, asking questions in this bacterial leaf blight that is the xanthomonas varese pathover varese whereas bacterial leaf spot is caused by sorry bacterial leaf streak is caused by xanthomonas varese pathover varese cola so coming to the tungro rice tungro uh, what is the test used for the identification of rice tungro this is iodine test and uh, they can also ask concentration 2 grams of iodine 6 grams of uh, potassium iodine 100 ml of water so like that uh, you can uh, make sure that the concentration also uh, you guys have to remember and then uh, coming to the tungro tungro can be transmitted by green leaf hopper nephrotrichs virus or nephrotrichs synthesis or something like that vectors are very very important uh, uh, there is a, definitely there will be a chance that they can ask questions related to uh this tungro disease and uh, gra- uh, grasses and is caused by brown leaf, uh, plant hopper and dwarf is transmitted by leaf hopper yellow, d- uh, yellow dwarf is transmitted by green leaf hopper uh, they can ask vectors it's very very important to make sure that the tungro is the most important that I had that I had seen in many places so better to uh, uh, memorize the uh, uh, viral diseases and especially transmitting agent or vectors and sometimes they may ask uh, vector uh, you know scientific name of vectors so better to you guys uh, can uh, uh go through uh, the scientific names of the vectors also and then coming to the rice kera disease a very 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 important disease and uh, i think uh, i had seen this question uh, two times in national eligibility test i had written three times out of three uh two times i had seen this question and uh, it's uh, one of the important question coming to the rice uh, uh, rice kera disease mainly due to zinc deficiency so uh, this is one of the important questions and the chances of uh, uh, questions that can uh, come through uh, come in especially rice so this is the questions are sometimes they may ask you know uh, 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 short notes on rice tungro virus so what is the iodine test and how to do iodine test and uh, sometimes they may ask uh, over at a short note on who's out test or who's out test hope you guys had already explained about who's out test you guys can go through so this is about uh, diseases and the questions that can uh, come through uh, rice